Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for Wider for the invitation and for the International Economic Association. Very happy to be here and present this work. So this work was uh, originally uh, in a Wider research project on the evolution of the nature of work and inequality. And uh, we started thinking about technology and we didn't find much in Tunisia, so we started exploring other aspects and this is what I will present today. So what will be the main story of this paper is the role of public employment and wage policy. And I'll try to convince you that the revolution context of Tunisia uh, shaped the story and this um, maybe creates a link between political context and economic aspects, which wasn't initially the, the idea of the project, but that we found evolving and thinking what may be the real uh, points, and we found that, that this, this one was the most important. So this is the plan of the presentation. Okay, so as I said, uh, there is a debate in the whole world on the main drivers of inequality. Uh, and polarization, and uh, there are many papers on the US and other rich countries which uh, rely on the work of uh, David Otter and many uh, others, and which uh, explain by the routine-based technical change uh, hypothesis that we see this polarization where the low-skilled and the highest skilled get higher income and the mid-skilled get lower income because their work is uh, routine-based and is replaced by machine computers, etc. So th the idea was to see if this debate is valid in developing countries, and some papers uh, that will be presented in the next days will deal with this issue. So uh, there is another hypothesis trying to explain competing hypothesis. It's more structural change-based. So there is a lot of work on the US and on other, other countries, including transition and developing countries, trying to explain that it's not really a technology story, it's more structural change, where the change of sectors may explain uh, the evolutions observed. Uh, and uh, a very important one on education premia, here also uh, in rich and poor country. Uh, for the rich countries, we have uh, an increase in skill premia because uh, the demand for skills is higher than the supply of skills and at the opposite in developing countries we see declining premia because there is a spectacular increase in education, especially tertiary education, but the demand for the skills is not as high and so this results in declining uh, education premia. So uh, the objective of this paper was to add another hypothesis to try to explain the evolution of earnings inequality, which is the role of public employment. Because in many countries like Tunisia and in MENA, it's very important. The role of the public sector is really huge. It's uh, an important part of the economy. It plays a role in redistribution. It's used in some countries also. Someone talked early in the previous session about political economy aspects. In countries like Lebanon, for example, the different communities have there, uh, everyone has its chair in public employment. So public employment is really central in politics and in economics in many countries. I don't know if it's the case in all developing countries, but at least in the region uh, that I'm working on, it's, it really plays a very important role. And also, of course, uh, there is work on this because we know that in public uh, wages, they are less dispersed because they are fixed by the government, so in general less inequality, and so the share of uh, public uh, work may have an impact on the whole inequality. We adopt in this paper labor market lens, so it's uh, totally earnings inequality that we deal with, and so we try to disentangle the role of the different factors and try to show that uh, the most important is this public sector story. So Tunisia, I take the case of Tunisia. Uh, I think it's an interesting country to analyze uh, such a story because Tunisia is a country that uh, for almost 20 years has been characterized by almost 5% uh, growth rate and despite this had around 15% unemployment and mainly due to a youth bulge and spectacular progress in tertiary education. So the, the, youth, the employment was mainly a youth unemployment and particularly for the graduates. Uh, the 2011 revolution uh, that came in Tunisia and that started the Arab Spring, which was also later had an impact on other uh, countries, 
uh, started mainly due to this uh, labor market, this bad labor market outcomes, but also, of course, political discontent, rising cronyism. I mean, it's, it's, it's an economic, social, and political story at the same time. Uh, the consequences of this revolution, at least for us here, what's interesting is a very high increase uh, in cost of security. When I talk about increasing cost, I, I don't mean just the budget, I mean also the employment. So the, the employment of security forces increased a lot because there were terrorist attacks, there were a lot of strikes, there were lots of uh, demonstrations and uh, terrorism. So the, the country had to invest massively in security forces and this had an impact on uh, the, the whole shape of the employment in the country. And also uh, public employment and wage policies to uh, attract social peace. Because when there are demonstrations, the government started hiring just to buy the social peace in the country. So we, we, uh, our analysis is based on 20 years uh, of uh, labor force service. We take a survey from 2000, another 2010, and another 2017. Uh, the methodology uh, is based on recentered influence function, and so we, ent uh, we assess the contribution of public uh, uh, policies against other determinants. And so our main finding is that lower public, pre, uh, lower public private wage gap after the revolution is the main driver of lower inequality in the country. There is also a lower sector wage gap that I will explain later. Decreasing education and premia, which is something very important in many developing countries, and some other factors that I will explain later. So the, the data I explained, the tax, con the tax content measures are taken from the database developed by author, and then we use the classification, the ISCO classification, and adapt it to the national classification. So here we see the Lorentz curve of Tunisia. It has, uh, when, uh, it went to the left, but more before the revolution than afterwards. So here, uh, which one, yeah. Here we see that it went from here, the, the inequality decreased more between 2000 and 2010 than between 2010 and 2017. Here we can look at the gross incidence curve and we see that the changes happened more here and at the middle, but not much except even decreasing uh, at the end. And maybe here it's really interesting to look because we see that the Gini decreased substantially between 2000 and 2010 by four points, then just by two points after the revolution. And uh, if we look at the 50, 90 uh, revolution of the, we see that the decrease between the 10 and the 50 was much higher between 2000 and 2010, while the decrease of the 50, 90 decreased more after 2010. So we have a different evolution, and the explanation here is quite clear. You see that the, the change in employment for the low skill decreased because we have less uh, low educated people. While between 2000 and 2010, there was a dec uh, an increasing share of the tertiary educated, uh, an increase here and decrease here. And after 2010, we see the opposite. So the share of uh, the higher educated decreases, while the share of medium educated uh, Increase. This is something that doesn't happen in many countries because it's like opposite to the evolution we expect in a society that is growing and developing. So here it's like going back because we have much more uh, tertiary educated people, but uh, the, the demand is decreasing for them. And if you want to look at a more detailed uh, level, we see if we look at the nine level ISCO classification, that we have a decrease for employment for the main high category and an increase for many of the lowest ones. And this is also translated in terms of wage, where you see that uh, the highest increase are for the low category wage. So here, this is what I said earlier, you see the supply of tertiary educated and the demand. So we see the big gap between the two that explain, of course, the decrease of the education premium that we see here, but it is much higher between 2000 and 2010 than it, uh, the, the, it, it starts uh, being reduced less. And even for women, for female uh, labor, it's, it doesn't decrease anymore. 
And now we, we, we look here at the role of uh, the technical change. So here you have the evolution of um, here you have the evolution of earnings. So we see that, for example, and you have uh, on this one the um, smooth uh, the RTI. So you see here that we have the lowest RTI for the highest skills, the highest for the medium. So this is the case for everyone. But we don't see here the, the U inverted curve, that you, uh, the, the U curve, sorry, that you see in rich countries. So we see here just an L curve between 2000 and 2010 and almost nothing for the others. And when we do the formal test of polarization, so we, th we see that for employment, we don't have anything significant. And when we look at wages, it's just significant between 2000 and 2010. So a decrease for initial mean and uh, a positive for the squared uh, mean log of earnings. So structural transformation doesn't play a big role. We see that the evolution is not very high. Agriculture after decrease increased again. Manufacturing also is uh, almost to its level of 2000. Uh, oh, sorry. Something happened. Oh. The only um, uh, important thing that we see is the increase of market, the share of market service. So it's uh, premature and in the industrialization that you observe in the country. And the share of non-market service remains quite high. Well, this is quite similar. This, th this, um, this one is quite important in our analysis. So here we compare the public and private uh, share the evolution for the different uh, parts. And we see that the, the share of high-skilled labor in the public sector decreased significantly after the revolution. So this is something really new. While for the private sector, uh, we don't have this uh, decrease. And when we look at wages, so here we have a contrasting evolution. First, when you compare the public and the private, you see that here, as I said earlier, this person is much higher for the private than for the public. However, the evolutions are uh, different. In the private sector, we see that the low-skilled part, the income of the low-skilled increase while the incomes of the high-skilled decrease. Uh, and for the public sector, between 2000 and 2010, it was the opposite. And then after 2010, after the revolution, we have the same situation where uh, the high skilled and the low skilled and medium skilled increase by the same level. So uh, in terms of share, it's much higher for the low and medium skilled. Um, so the methodology is based on, as I said, uh, on, um, on uh, the estimation of uh, recentered influence function. Uh, so I will present this the last results. Uh, no, yeah, this one and this one. Okay. So here we look at the first thing that we look at is what are the composition effects and what are the earnings effects. And uh, we, we see that here we have that. Sorry, it's written 2010 three times. It's 2000, 2010, 2010, 2017, and 2000, 2017. So we see that uh, the composition effect here, uh, we have RTI has a negative effect, uh, age doesn't have an important effect, uh, and public has a positive effect. So we'll see them much better for the uh, decomposition of earning structure because the earning structure effect are much more important than the composition effects here. So here we see, for example, that being private sector is the highest effect in the analysis. Then we have, uh, we have education, uh, experience, and RTI that plays a negative role at the, between 2000 and 2010, then a positive role between 2010 and 2017. So for the composition effect, I will not explain uh, much because uh, we see that th there are almost uh, compensation so effects that increase, like education, for example. Uh, education that has here, you see, 
that uh, the more you have education, it has a disequalizing effect, but there are many other effects that uh, compensate. Mm -hmm. However, uh, on the earning structure effect, I think what is the most uh, interesting here, for the earning structure effect, we see that this public-private story is the most important in terms of equalizing, especially between 2000 and 2010. So here you see that it decreases income for the richest part of the population, and this is why it has the highest effect. Uh, on the industry part, here also it increases for the poorest part of the population and it increases income for the, uh, it decreases income for the richest. So it plays also an important role in terms of uh, education also plays a role here positive and here negative. Uh, in 2010-2017, the public-private explanation has a less important role because uh, we have this evolution that I showed earlier where uh, we have a, a, more, a closer uh, difference between public and private uh, after the revolution. And finally, the industry story is becoming more and more important and uh, we have also uh, education is distribution of education is quite similar now on almost uh, all the categories and it's negative. So to, to conclude, we have in Tunisia a high uh, decrease in inequality uh, by six point in almost uh, 20 years. We have an L-shaped polarization, so it's not similar to what we observe in rich countries, but uh, similar to what we observe in countries like China. So there have been work on China showing that there is this L-shaped uh, polarization where incomes of the poorest part of the population increase, but we don't see a similar increase of the highest uh, part of the population. There is an ambiguous uh, evidence on RBTC. So we have this L-shape, but when we look in detail, we have, the, we have the routine index that increases between 2000 and uh, 2010 and then decreases slightly after 2010. So there isn't a clear effect like in developed countries where we see a decrease. In Tunisia, it's almost stable and many people explain this evolution by offshoring, by, by, by uh, various uh, uh, hypotheses that uh, rich countries may be exporting their routine activities to countries like Tunisia. Uh, we have uh, an earning structure effect dominating the composition effect and uh, the inequality change so the main reasons are, uh, I mean reasons, it's not a causal analysis of course, it's correlations here. So we have hypothesis at least of a declining of the public wage, uh, private wage gap that plays a significant or substantial role in declining inequalities. Uh, declining trends of sector premia, then uh, excess supply of tertiary educated that uh, pushes uh, edu uh, education premia, uh, and an increase in marginal returns to low wage average RTI jobs, falling returns to experience that have been shown in Brazil to be the main factor uh, in a paper by uh, Cisco Ferreira uh, in Tunisia is the fourth factor. So it's interesting to study different countries because different settings may explain different aspects. And finally, we find also decreasing uh, regional wage gap.